I've got my camera set up. I've got my studio. Just kidding. This is actually just our guest bedroom. So welcome to the guest bedroom. Maybe if you come over one day after this COVID-19 thing, you can come over and stay here. But today, I want us to answer a couple of questions. Number one, what the heck do we do in the unknown? How do we handle those moments when we're shook, emotionally or physically disturbed? You know, when we're upset, how do we handle those moments? And, and I want to look at what God's word has to say about it. Because look, there's so many pages in here and I'm sure there's something. And so today we're going on a journey. You're going to join me and we're going to find out how to handle those moments when we get shook, how to live in the unknown. Because right now, let's be real. COVID-19 has got us living in the unknown. We have no idea when we're going to go back to normal life. And for some of us, that's scary. For some of us, we're upset because maybe you're a senior and you don't get to walk this year. Maybe maybe your family is going through some some trials. Maybe maybe your parents are losing their jobs. Maybe you know people who are actually sick. And this is a hard time. And you see, in these moments of unknown, our faith could either grow or crumble. And so it's really important that we stand firm through this. But how? How do we do it? Well, join me as we figure out together how we stand firm in those moments of unknown. Come on. All right, so we're downtown Wilmington. And we're going to go to a place that I... As a kid, used to be the most shook. So much is missing, so give us the real thing. I know it's true, I know it's true. As I'm walking through this graveyard right now, I'm thinking so many things. Like what kind of life do I want to live? Do I want to live a life that I'm constantly fearful of what's going on around me? Or do I want to live a life where I am so free in the victory that Christ has won for me? I mean, seriously, I look around at these names on these gravestones and I only think, man, what was their life like? Were they able to have a life of victory because of Christ? Or did they live in fear? You know, I think about Jesus and I think about his life and I, and I, and I think about all the amazing things he, he has done. But the greatest thing that he has ever done for us is he took our punishment. Because of the work that he did on the cross, we have reconciliation. We have regeneration. We are redeemed. And if we choose to follow in that, then we have victory. But I think about as he's headed to the cross, I can't even imagine the emotions and the feelings that were going through his head. He had some conversations with some pretty important people. For instance, he had a conversation with a guy named Pilate. He was the governor, the Roman governor over that area. And he says this, The Jewish leaders replied, By our law, he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? This was the moment where Jesus could have gotten out of this punishment that he didn't deserve. He could have gotten out of the crucifixion when Pilate and him were talking. This was a moment where he could have performed some kind of miracle and said, Peace, I'm out. But no, he kept his promise. He was not shaken in the midst of uncertainty because he knew what he had to do. And then the people said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So after the decision was made, Jesus was beaten and then had to carry his cross a mile trek up to Golgotha. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. As Jesus was being nailed to the cross, 
His mother Mary was there watching. The one who raised him, the one who took care of him, the one who loved him so very much. She just watched as her son was being nailed to the cross. You see, I think her silence tells us a lot. I think it can teach us a lot of things. Number one, that we need to have confidence in his plan. I think Mary had a confidence in his plan. Although she might have been shook, and although there were a lot of unknown variables, she stayed there and she stayed quiet. Because she probably could have spoke up. She probably could have told the crowds, no, 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 he's crazy. He doesn't know what he's doing. Disregard him. But that's not what she did. She stayed quiet and she allowed God's plan to take place. I don't know what you may, might be going through right now. Maybe you feel like you've been watching your life being <laughs> tossed and turned like a rag doll. I don't know what's going on, but in these kinds of unknown moments, you can have confidence that God loves you and he cares about you and he's going to fulfill his plan. As Jesus was taking some of his last breaths, he said the words, to tell us die. It is finished. And that was a big deal because it, he basically says, it is paid in full. We no longer owe a debt. Now we live in victory. And as he died on the cross, they took him down and put him in the tomb. But three days later, something amazing happened. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell down into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was laying. Hey, I wanna let you know that God's got a great plan for you. He loves you, he cares about you. Instead of like worrying about everything that's going on around you, why don't you start thinking and focusing in on what he's doing in you, what God is doing inside of you. Could you imagine how that could transform your life? Could you imagine what that would do just for your soul? <laughs> so students, I wanna let you know, or whoever else is listening, that God's plan is a good plan, and he cares for you, and he loves you. And I think about James chapter one, where like, hey, we go through temptations, we go through trials so that we can grow. My prayer is that through this COVID-19 that we are growing, that we are looking within, not around us, but we're looking within and finding out what is God teaching me in this moment right now? Students, I love you. I want you to know that you matter and I'll see you next time. forever in your heart your steps I will follow I put my trust in who you are your voice is my arrow and I will walk dark to see how the light breaks through and I will run to your arms and I will hold on to you and 
And I will lift my eyes to things unseen, to the promise in your victory. And I will build my life on the mystery where you call me. And I will go into the unknown. can't be shaken with your word hidden in my heart I can't contain what I have seen light rising from the dark and I will guys it just took a few minutes for me to think about what God is doing within me rather than what's going wrong around me and I found my keys <laughs> so I'm not gonna get trapped in the graveyard wouldn't that stink though that'd be terrible all right I'm out of here <laughs>